Good morning. This is Bucky Stokes and my website is mountupdesign.com. Today we want to ask ourselves a question. Does God need us? Does God need us? That seems like a relatively simple question, but there's been so much debate over that through the centuries. There's been debate over that as to whether he needs us. Well, let's don't put ourselves up. He surely does not need you or me specifically, but he has appointed a time and place for us to do something for him. And if we don't do it, somebody else is going to do it. And Ecclesiastes, the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, tells us that there is a time and place for everything under heaven. And that time and place does not just uh, happen arbitrarily or by coincidence that time and place is decided by God the Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit in other words that time is designated and who is designated to do what in that time you me all of us have a job to do but if we don't do it somebody else is going to do it because he has something he needs to get done. God does. Now let's, first of all, let's look at some scriptures. Let's look at Isaiah, the sixth chapter, and the eighth verse. <clears throat> this will give us a little insight. And this is Isaiah talking. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Now, us. That's God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Who will go for us? And then I said, Here I am. Send me. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their eyes and their ears uh, heavy and blind their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. Well, Isaiah goes on to ask him, well, how long is this going to take? <laughs> and God says, as long as I, I, need, I deem it necessary. So the point is that Isaiah was obedient to the call. He was obedient to the call. Uh, the Holy Spirit stirred him up. He was obedient. He knew exactly what he needed to do, and he did it. So that's the main thing. Let's be obedient to the call. When he does say, okay, I need you, then let's make sure that we are obedient to that call. Because if we don't, we aren't. He's going to make sure that that job gets done by somebody. Okay? All right, now let's, <clears throat> let's read. I want to read from Isaiah. Excuse me. I want to read from Esther. Queen Esther. Now, we're all familiar with Queen Esther. She was a Jew. She was selected by uh, King Ahasuerus uh, to be his queen. Um, and of course nobody knew she was a Jew really and, but he, she had an uncle Mordecai who was in the know and he uh, it was a wicked man in charge of things for the king at that point his name was Haman and Haman observed that Mordecai would not bow and give homage to the king like he was supposed to like all the other servants did. And so he determined, well, he was going to send a Mordecai to the gallows. Well, that didn't work out. But at any rate, let's, let's move on. What happened? Haman decided he was going to take it out on all the Jews. He knew that Mordecai was a Jew, and he decided he was going to destroy all the Jews because probably none of them would bow to the king and um, give homage to the king. 
So he decided that was what he was going to do. Well, Mordecai found out about it. And so he, she, he went to Esther, sent word to her. He went to her. And she listened to him. She was, uh, he was her, her uncle. And he had raised her, okay, from a young girl. So I, I commit that uh, the third and fourth chapters of Esther to you for a good reading. But let's pick up on it. Um, because he, she decided that she was going to help the Jews in whatever way she could. And Mordecai told the messenger, go to Esther and say to her, do not think to yourself that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, Relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place, someone else. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for just such a time as this. Now, Mordecai wanted to make it clear that the time was right, that God had designated this time and place for Esther to do her thing and Esther agreed and the long story is made short Haman was the one that went to the gallows instead of Mordecai and the Jews uh, the king issued another decree couldn't couldn't uh, take back the first decree because Haman had said look use the fact that they're not going to pay homage to you king uh, as a reason for us to destroy them. So he, he put it in writing. He, put it, he, he made a decree, put it in writing, and went all over the provinces and uh, all over the country. And so uh, all the Jews were going to be destroyed. Well, Esther made a, uh, got the king to make another decree when it was all said and done, and the Jews were saved. But the point is that her time was then. That was when Mordecai said, this is your time. God has designated you for just such a time as this. This is your decision. He has chosen you, Queen Esther. And we can look at that and we can see all the way through why, why Esther was made queen and how many thousands of Jews were saved as a result of her uh, getting the king to issue another decree. Well, let's look another place because not only has he cho chosen us, not only has he chosen us, but we are to be ready. We are to be awake in order to hear that call because we, we're going to hear that call from maybe more than one source. We're going to probably hear it from the Holy Spirit within us. We might hear it from angels who are telling us that. We might even hear it over the TV, that he is calling us specific, excuse me, specifically, you, me, to do this or that. Well, let's look at the Song of Solomon, also known as the Song of Songs. Um, Let's look at the fifth chapter. And we're going to read the second through the eighth verses. And the Song, the Song of Solomon is a beautiful love story. And uh, I think we all are aware of that. And we, it is beautiful reading. Well, let's see, let's see, let's see what, what, the, what, what it, how it reads here. Verses two through eight. I slept, this is the bride, this is the bride sleeping. I slept, but my heart was awake. A sound, my beloved is knocking. Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my perfect one, for my head is wet with dew, my locks with the drops of the night. I had put off my garment, she says to herself. How could I put it back on? I had bathed my feet. How could I uh, soil them now? My beloved put his hand to the latch 
and my heart was thrilled within me. But I rose to open to my beloved, and my hands dripped with myrrh, my fingers with liquid myrrh, on the handles of the boat. I opened for my beloved, but my beloved had turned and gone. My soul failed me. And that's exactly what happened. Her soul failed her. My soul failed me when he spoke. I sought him, but found him not. I called him, but he gave no answer. The watchmen found me as they went about in the city. They beat me. They bruised me. They took away my veil. Those watchmen of the walls. I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him I am sick with love. You see, she was sleeping. Her soul, her soul is what did her in, in the, on this particular occasion. She, she intended, her spirit, in her spirit, she intended to get up. She was going to get up and go to that door. But her soul said, wait a minute now. I've already washed up. I've already put, put my evening gown, uh, garment on. Uh, I've, I've already, uh, how am I going to get out there and get my feet all dirty again? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I just can't do that. So that's exactly what happens to us. We're not awake whenever God calls us. Our souls a lot of time prevent us from being awake. Well, today, taking this to heart, does God need you? Does God need me? He does need us, contrary to what people might say, but not specifically us because we're so high and mighty. We're just a tool. We're just a, an instrument in his hand. And so he has chosen us. He has already declared it. Uh, he, has, he has said, I'm going to use you. 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 I'm going to use you to do a specific thing. I've chosen you for this exact time and in this exact place. Are you willing? Well, Isaiah said, here I am, send me. And that's what we need to be able to do. And not just to wait around for our, our soul to get satisfied because our soul won't ever get satisfied. Our soul's always wandering around. But our spirit man says, I want to serve you, Lord. So let's listen to our spirit man. And let's put that soul away. When we, We've got to be awake when, he's, when he calls us. And when we are awake, then we're going to get the job done for him. We're going to be the one who goes. And we have the Holy Spirit inside of us to constantly remind us that God needs you. God needs me. And not because we're so high and mighty, but because he has declared it. He has chosen us. And he has declared it and proclaimed it. This is your time and place. You do it. You do it now. I need you now, this moment. And if you don't do it, if you don't do it, someone else I'll have to appoint to do it. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word today. Thank us. Thank you for, thank you for reminding us that we are your instruments. You have chosen us to do a specific thing. In a specific, at a specific time, in a specific place, and you want us to obey. And you, most of all, want us to be awake to answer the call whenever, whenever he calls us. To answer the call. I call you, I want you to answer the call. Thank you, Father, for reminding us of this very important word. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And we also pray for those who listen today and who, who, who watch. And we thank you so much for this ministry. Thank you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Might I say, if you have not visited my website, mountupdesign.com, please do so because these videos, we'll also have a copy of these videos on the website interspersed throughout the website. And I think that the website would help to further our ministry and help you. Thank you so much for, for listening today and watching. See you next time.